Virginia lived in a small town, you know, there wasn't a whole lot. So there's not really a whole lot to do for teenagers, you know, and, and me and the three other friends of mine had, had piled into one of my buddy's cars and, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't really into drinking or drugs or anything, but we wanted to, to try and find a party because that's usually where the girls are going to be. So we, uh, we piled into my buddy's car and we were going to go to this place called Jackman Trail. Now that's just what the locals call it. If you look for Jackman Trail on a map, you'll never find it. Uh, it, and what it basically is, is there's a river that goes through the town I grew up in called the Saline River and the interstate passes over it. And there's an overpass. It's about, you know, 80 to 100 feet above the river. So what would happen is, you know, teenagers would go down there and they were pretty obscured and they'd hang out and party and, and whatnot. And to get to it, you had to go through this weird roundabout way. There was only one road in and out. And part of the road led you through this really sketchy looking rundown trailer park. And then it was woods on both sides until you got down through some rough roads down to the river where everybody would be. So we decided to go down there and check out the river and see if we could find anything going on. And we get down there and there's, there's nothing going on. There's nobody there. So we figured we made the drive. We'll hang out for a few minutes and then we'll jump back in the car and head back to town and see what we can find. And on our way out, you know, we were coming up through the, the rough part of the road. We were starting to get to some of the smoother area of the road. It was still a dirt road. And we got to the part, it was a straightaway in between the river and where the, the trailer park started. And it was lined with trees down the left and the right side. Well, we made this turn, and as we made this turn, the lights hit something on the left side of the road. And this was really only a one-lane road. It wasn't much bigger than for one, you know, like a pickup or something to drive down. And I, I, me and the driver, I'm sitting in the, the – my, my buddy's driving. I don't want to use his name. We'll just call him F. My buddy F was driving. And I'm in the front passenger seat, and I have two more friends that are in the back seat. They're just kind of goofing off, you know, messing around, talking about stuff and, you know, typical teenager crap. And, you know, my buddy F and I are looking at, at this thing, trying to figure out what it is as we're slowly approaching it. And when the lights fully hit it, this, it's this monster-looking thing. It, it was squatted down, and I, I could see it's its legs. It had long, skinny legs, and it looked like it was crouched down. And its arms were also very skinny and very long. It, it, they were so long that his, the backs of his hands and his knuckles were actually sitting on the ground. And it had the, the skin had kind of a, uh, a pale greenish tint to it with bumps weird size bumps in different places. And I could see the bumps because of the shadows of the light hitting them. I could see the projected shadows where the bumps were. And it had this unnaturally long and slender face. And it turned, slowly looked at the car and it, its eyes, it had eye shine. It was a yellow eye shine. And when it saw the car, it let out this God awful scream that I mean, I, I could never reproduce it, but I'll never forget it either. And it, in its mouth were these long, sharp teeth just everywhere. And I don't, I, they had it old school, they rebooted it lately, but do you remember that show V where you had the aliens that would eat the, the mice and their mouths would open really yeah. big like a snake? It, its mouth seemed to do that when it opened and screamed at the car. And then it jumped. This thing did not have wings or anything. It jumped from the left side of the road across to the right side, landed in the top of a tree, and was gone. And I didn't, the only reason I knew that it had landed in the top of a tree was because I could see that part of the tree move. Because we had our bright lights on, and I could see the tree moving. After that, that thing was gone. So my buddy who was driving, he and I both screamed at the same time, and he floored it. We got out of there. We stopped a few miles down the road at a gas station, and we got out. We were talking about it, and the two guys in the back seat were asking us, well, what was that, man? What was going on? And we said, we, we think we saw a demon. And they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. You guys are messing with us. No, no, man. I'm serious. We were dead serious. You know, we at the time we thought it was a demon, but you know, 
looking back, I don't know what that thing was because when when you see things that you don't understand, you you look at it through the filter of your your beliefs. And at the time, I was really very heavily involved in in, in church and things like that. And I know that sounds kind of contrary to us looking for girls, but teenagers, right? Um, but I was very heavily involved in church, so that's what I thought. I mean, that's it looked like basically it looked like a, a kind of like a gargoyle, a wingless gargoyle, only thinner um, and taller, and it had the, the the yellow the yellow eyes, and it it scared me so bad, Tony, that I would not go down to that area. It, it took twenty years before I went back down there. Um, now it's a they've cleared out all those trees and they they've made it a a, a stocked lake and a park and everything for for people to go and fish and they got walking trails and everything like that. Uh, it took my wife a good month of convincing to get me to, to go down there with, with her to do the walking trails because I didn't, I wasn't going to do it because of what I've seen. 